Have you ever wondered how the school librarian finds a particular book immediately though there are hundreds of books of different subjects in the library? You might have also been surprised with the quickness with which a chemist bring out a particular medicine out of thousands of medicines stored in the shop. Have not you noticed and asked yourself why does a grocer usually keep all pulses at one place, all types of soap at another single place and all types of biscuit together in one corner? What difference will it make if the shopkeeper keeps biscuit, soaps, pulses, namkeens, oils, etc. all at one place? Back home, why does your mother keep clothes at one place, all utensils at another place and books in one corner? This chapter will help you learn and understand that this is primarily done in order to locate a particular object with ease and convenience. You will also learn that objects and materials can be grouped together on the basis of similarities and differences in their properties. Such grouping and classification also help us in understanding the common properties of materials and hence their utility for making different objects. Let us begin by knowing the diversity of objects and materials around us. Diversity of objects. Look around and observe carefully. If you are in a classroom, you might see a variety of objects such as tables, chairs, bags, fans, books, notebooks, water bottle, tiffin box, doors, windows, blackboard, tube light, bulb, etc. If you are at home, you might see clothes, utensils, bottles, buckets, clock, dining table, toys, boxes, beds, television and many other objects. We can easily see that all these objects can be put together in different groups according to the materials they are made up of. Classification of objects. Objects can be grouped together on the basis of a variety of considerations. Don't you arrange your school bag putting all books in one section, notebooks in another section of the bag and all small size items like pencil, pen, eraser, sharpener, etc. in a pencil box. Your mother arranges a variety of objects in the house according to their nature and use. A librarian arranges books subject-wise and alphabetically. A chemist keeps different medicines in separate shells according to their use, make or some specific considerations. Scientists study plants and animals by grouping these under different categories. Doctors treat their patients by considering different groups of diseases. Have you ever thought what is the purpose and need of such grouping? It is interesting to note that such grouping is done because it helps in sorting out the objects, make it easier to locate any object quickly that is saves time is convenient to arrange things systematically helps to identify any objects helps in having systematic knowledge about things makes study of different objects easier helps to understand similarities and dissimilarities among different objects enables us to differentiate between members of different groups such a method of grouping similar things together is called classification. In other words, the process of sorting out and grouping things according to some basis or criteria is called classification. This is done on the basis of similarities and dissimilarities between different things around us. Natural and man-made materials we can also classify objects and materials as natural and man-made. Natural materials are those materials which occur in nature on their own and can be used as such or can be processed to make them more useful. Example, wood, cereals, coal, silk, 
cotton stone water wax jute etc can you add more to this list on the other hand the materials which do not occur in nature but are produced artificially by humans are called man made materials example plastics glass nylon soaps detergents etc can you add to this list can you guess why it is essential to make materials which do not occur naturally matter when we observe the objects closely we see that in spite of differences in their properties all these objects have weight or mass occupy space and can be felt through one or more of our sense organs matter is anything that occupies space and has a definite mass it includes all the materials found in universe all matter is made up of substances which are further made up of tiny particles it is the arrangement of these tiny particles which decides the properties of a particular type of matter states of matter matter can exist in three states these are solid state liquid state gaseous state for example water can exist as ice solid state water liquid state and steam gaseous state the different states of matter are due to the difference in spaces between the tiny particles of matter in solids particles are very closely packed in liquids particles are close but have a little space between them in gases particles are far from each other having large spaces between them properties of solid liquid and gas solids have definite shape mass and volume example wooden box knife candle etc liquids have definite mass and volume but they do not have definite shape as they take the shape of the container gases have definite mass but they do not have definite shape and volume as they take the shape of the container and occupy all the space available to them properties of materials one of the most common criteria for classifying materials is based on their properties and hence uses have you ever thought why a cooking utensil is not made of wood or cardboard why is a tea cup generally made of china clay plastic or glass why do the handles of cooking utensils have plastic cover on them what difference will it make if a tumbler is made of cloth or wood all such questions can be easily answered by studying the properties of different materials we generally choose a material to make an object depending upon its properties and the purpose for which that object is to be used thus a tumbler cannot be made from cloth or paper since these materials are not able to hold a liquid A shopkeeper keeps eatables in transparent glass containers or behind glass shelves so that buyers can easily see these items. Let us try to study and understand some of the common properties of materials. Appearance, luster. If we look around and observe the surfaces of different objects carefully, we notice that surfaces of some objects like a steel spoon coin door knob or water taps shine when light falls on them these materials are said to have a luster and are called lustrous materials metallic surfaces generally show this property gold and silver are used for making jewelry mainly due to this property However, some metallic surfaces are also observed to lose their shine when exposed to open air for a long duration. This shine can be regained by rubbing the surface with cloth 
or sand paper. We also find that there are a large number of other objects whose surface does not have a shine or luster. These dull looking materials such as paper, wood, plastic, cotton, rubber, etc. which do not have shine are called non-lustrous materials. Look around and identify more objects whose surface is lustrous or non-lustrous. Hardness. On pressing flesh of your own body or someone else's body, we can observe that it can be easily pressed and changes shape to some extent. However, if we press at the head, knees or elbows, they do not change shape and cannot be pressed. Similarly, if we press the surface of an object of wood, steel or stone etc., it is difficult to change its shape. All these materials and objects are said to be hard. On the other hand, if we press foam, cotton, wool etc., these change shape easily just like flesh. All such materials and objects are said to be soft. We can also observe that it is easier to cut soft materials but difficult to cut hard materials. Texture Close your eyes and touch the surfaces of a few things. Do they all feel the same? You will find that some of them are smooth whereas others are rough to touch. Transparency Why are we not able to tell what is inside a wooden or metallic box without opening it? Why are window panes in houses and offices generally made of glass? Why does a shopkeeper keep toffees and other sweets in glass jars or cases having glass sides? This is due to the reason that light can easily pass through glass and we can see through it. Such materials through which light can pass are called transparent materials. Can you name any other similar materials? On the other hand, there are materials like wood, metal, cardboard, etc. through which light cannot pass. Such materials are called opaque materials. Can you think of two more similar materials? There are still another kind of materials through which light can pass only partially. Example, thin cloth, frosted misty glass and oil spread paper. Such materials are called translucent materials. Solubility You might have observed that if we put some sugar or salt in water contained in a tumbler and stir it well, they disappear in water completely. We say that salt and sugar are soluble in water. Water is called the solvent and sugar or salt are called solute in this case. Let us find out whether other substances like sand, talcum powder, wax, chalk powder, soap, etc. are also soluble in water or not. The role of water as a solvent is very important in our lives. However, water is not the only solvent used for dissolving other substances. Kerosene oil, petrol, ether, etc. are some other liquids which are also used as solvents. Do liquids also dissolve or mix with water? Let us try to get answer to this question. We can see that some liquids mix with water completely. These are said to be miscible with water. Example, milk or lemon juice. Other liquids like mustard oil, petrol, hair oil, etc. do not mix with water and are called immiscible with water. It is also useful to know that air gets dissolved in water to some extent. Aquatic plants and animals survive in water on dissolved air. Floating or sinking. We shall notice that if we put different objects in water, 
these either sink or remain on its surface that is float for example a coin an iron nail a stone etc sink whereas a pencil eyes toothbrush plastic bottle etc float on the surface of water have you ever thought why object sink or float discuss it with your friends to know the reason ask your parents or teacher about it to know the exact explanation magnetic property substances can be grouped into two categories according to their behavior towards a magnet the substances which get attracted towards a magnet are called magnetic substances example iron nickel cobalt the substances which do not get attracted towards a magnet are called non magnetic substances example plastic glass rubber liquids and gases nails get attracted by magnet conductivity conduction of electricity some substances like most of the metals which allow electricity to pass through them are called conductors of electricity this property is called conductivity other materials do not allow electricity to pass through them and are called insulators conduction of heat some materials are good conductors of heat while others are bad so we can group the materials into two classes on the basis of conduction of heat through them good conductors substances which allow heat to pass through them example most of the metals silver is the best conductor of electricity bad conductors substances which do not allow heat to pass through them example plastic wood rubber etc matter can be classified on the basis of physical state solubility appearance hardness transparency or conduction of heat and electricity which makes their study convenient and also helps us in deciding their uses in different fields